I think in most cases, we first want to assess the tumor and, and see if this is amenable to surgical resection. Smaller tumors like microadenomas that are less than a centimeter, uh, there's more likelihood of a cure. Unfortunately, about two thirds of these patients have very large tumors, more than a centimeter, and some of them can be very invasive. And so surgical cure cannot always be attained, but certainly in many cases, we do try to debulk the tumor and um, provide some amount of growth hormone control. And then after that, we have to consider if that patient would be a candidate for radiotherapy or if we should try medical therapy. Um, you know, radiotherapy has its own problems in the sense that it, it takes uh, years for that to take effect. So even if you see that a patient would benefit from that, we still have to control the disease in the meantime. And also radiotherapy can lead to some issues with um, hypopituitarism where now the rest of the pituitary can also be damaged. And so oftentimes we will move on to a medical therapy to control this disease. We really have two uh, approved medications uh, to treat acromegaly. The first are somatostatin receptor ligands, which bind to a receptor on the surface of the tumor, and that uh, turns down growth hormone secretion. It can also cause shrinkage of the tumor, so it can lead to better tumor control, and it does that by um, leading to apoptosis of some of those cells. Uh, we have a second therapy, um, which is a growth hormone receptor antagonist, that requires daily injections, and that decreases the IGF-1 production from the liver, the major problem with the symptoms and signs. However, it doesn't lead to tumor control because it's not targeted at the tumor level, it's targeted at the growth hormone receptor level in the tissues.